Hey you guys, so today's video will be garden with me video because I need to do a bunch of stuff in front of our house. Uh, first of all, I bought a retractable hose, which I need to install. Also, the hedges in front of the house need to be trimmed. They look just completely out of control. And then the front pots actually look pretty good, but I never showed you those. And then there's some planting that I did earlier this summer flanking the sidewalk that kind of looks okay, but it's got some issues. And I wanted to show you those because I want to show you that gardening is not all about, you know, unicorns and butterflies and things go wrong. And like what I'm thinking about trying differently next year. So let me show you the planting first and then I'm going to start the tasks. All right, so here's the front of our house and I'm sorry about all the noise, you guys. We live on a very busy street. Um, so I will try to point the camera away from the road um, as much as I can. But here's the planting that I did earlier this summer. And if you remember last year, I actually did all Supertunia snowdrift here. Um, and they did not do that great. Uh, first, we have a lot of budworm uh, in our area, so I had to just spray them constantly. And I'm not sure if I have enough sun for uh, petunias here. So this year I decided to diversify and I added a lot of euphorbias. I have four different types. The diamond frost, um, glitz, breathless and compact white. And I don't know which one is which. I think this is the diamond um, frost right here. And they performed beautifully. I love this combination of snow drift with euphorbias and I was thinking if something happens with the petunias, supertunias, you know, this um, euphorbia still will perform. I also included some verbena, which are beautiful, but they got some sort of um, maybe flea hopper or mites. So I'm not sure if I will be including them next year, but again, euphorbia did beautifully. But as you can see, there are some pockets in here where I had a lobelia, which was beautiful, but this is not the right spot for lobelias because they definitely need a little bit more water than all of these plants here. And I hand water all of this, you guys. There's no irrigation here. So <laughs> you can see the lobelia is like, eh, why did you put me over here? I'm struggling. So all of the empty spots, that's where the lobelia uh, was. But overall, I am, you know, kind of pleased with it. I'm definitely going to repeat this combination. It just has that beautiful airy feel. And euphorbia is just so reliable. Doesn't get any insects or diseases. It's also deer resistant. As for the tasks, as you can see, the U hedge needs trimming and the gold mops also need trimming but i will do that later in the season close to christmas because i'm going to use this plant for a garland that i think i'm going to make again if you guys remember i made that you know mother of all garlands and i said it was too difficult too much work but i think i will do it again because it was so beautiful so another thing that i'm going to do today is install that um a retractable hose and these are all of the pots that I have here in the front I kind of lined them up in the middle because I'm going to uh, trim the U hedges here so once I'm all done I will put the plants in their spots and I will give you a tour of everything that I have growing here but here is the hose the retractable hose right there I already dug a hole for it so let me grab some water and concrete and get it set all right so here's the hose reel and i actually bought it from front gate because they had a big sale in the summer um, and i originally wanted to hang it on the wall but our siding is so old our house is 100 years old and we also need to paint the house. So I decided to hang it on a post, which is sold separately. So I will install that post right in that corner. And I think it will be great because it can swivel easily, has access. 
because in the spring I um, put my little greenhouse right here and I think it will just be great. Now, um, the materials that I need for this project is concrete, some water, you know, gloves, mask, protection from concrete. I don't use concrete that often in my garden. This probably will be the third time, so no judging. I am just following instructions on the bag. So let me uh, go ahead and get started. As per instructions, the first thing is to fill the hole with third of the water, then place the posts, okay, pour concrete, All right, so the instructions say that this will set in about half an hour. This is a fast setting concrete mix. And in half an hour, I can hang the hose reel. But while I wait, I'm going to trim my hedges. All right, so here's our lovely U hedges or taxes. And these are very old. They're probably over 50 years old. However, U's or taxes can live for a very long time. In fact, there are estates in England where they have yew hedges and topiaries that are hundreds of years old. This is a very flexible plant as for pruning. And even if you cut into the old wood of this conifer, it will rebound. Um, I would say this is an exception to the rule. Do not try to cut into the old wood of other conifers because that part of the plant will just die. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is actually make sort of like a rough A shape out of this hedge. And this is kind of like a quick tip for you. Uh, a lot of times people do a reverse A on hedges and what happens is that light has hard time reaching the bottom of the branches and they slowly start to die out. But if you do kind of like a rough A shape, the light will reach the bottom of the branches with no problem. And uh, it's like a really nice uh, look on the hedge. Also, I prune the yew hedges pretty much any time in our climate and you really have to follow the type of the plant that you have for a hedge as to when you have to prune it. For example, if you have a spring blooming hedge like a forsythia like I have in the back, which is like the worst hedge in the world, we can only prune it right after it blooms or I will lose all of the flowers for the following year. So definitely just follow the instructions on your particular plant of the um, type of the hedge you have.
All right, you guys, this is day two of the operations because I had to stop short yesterday. Uh, we had this freaky storm go through our neighborhood. So I only finished this side of the hedge, but this morning I trimmed everything. I also installed the hose reel, which I love. I don't know why it took me so long to get one and install one. Um, and I also placed all of the pots in their spots. So um, let me give you a quick tour. All right, so the hedges are trimmed. Are they perfect? No. Could it be neater? Sure. But is it better than it was before? Absolutely. Um, there are some holes on the bottom there, just because I haven't been tending after the hedges this year. With ewes, the more often you prune them, the tighter and neater they get. This year, unfortunately, I only had the time to prune them once. Now, the pots, let me just go over the plants that I have in the pots. So this is um, Salvia Love and Wishes. It's one of my favorite salvias this year. Beautiful color. I don't even know how to describe it. It's super bright. And the uh, calyx is also very decorative. So even when this plant stops blooming, it still looks beautiful. Then I have this uh, Mona Lavender Plicthranthus, which is star uh, starting to bloom. It's got lots of buds. This is uh, Perfume Purple Nicotiana. Love this color. Um, and it matches Love and Wishes almost exactly, but definitely different shape. This uh, plant right here is um, Nicotiana Only the Lonely. It is huge, you guys. Um, actually, you know what? Let me show you on the other side, like how big that one is. All right, so it's obviously in the pots. It's a little bit uh, taller, but in landscape, it can get up to six feet tall and the leaves are huge. But let me trim this leaf off. I mean, look at the size of this because I have some petunias that are kind of struggling to grow from underneath. I mean, look at this. It's like a hosta leaf. This is incredible. Um, this petunia right here, white avalanche, I actually started from seed this year and I've been pruning it. It's been blooming on and off pretty much all summer. This is a silver plexranthus that I um, had cuttings off that I started here in pots. And of course, there is a bunch of euphorbia interplanted everywhere. And this petunia right here, you guys, is just like amazing. I love it. Um, it is double cascade and I started it from seed. It's a double petunia, just really beautiful. They don't even look like petunias to me. Oh, just love it. Um, this is Helichrysum. I think this is silver stitch or silver thread. I'll, I'll post all of the names on the screen for you. Again, a love and wishes salvia, kind of intermingling with everything. Uh, then I have purple heart tradescancia, some gara, some uh, more euphorbia. This is, this is the mountain one. Yes, diamond mountain actually didn't perform as well as the diamond frost as you can see like the flowers are not as profuse so like the diamond frost is right there like look how pretty that is um what else do i have here oh patty gave me um some of her dahlias she had some extras and i didn't know where to put them and i decided to experiment and put them in these pots and they, she said it were uh, cafe au lait, and they do look like cafe au lait-ish. This is the same plant, and it's like the flowers look kind of different. It's got tons of buds. However, this plant has a lot of issues. Um, it has mosaic, so after it's done blooming, I'm going to have to trash the tubers because it's just, it's diseased. Uh, this year's Cobea never made it to the top, um, which kind of is a bummer because last year I had it all the way to the top. It was blooming already. So here's what I did wrong with the Cobea. I actually did not pinch it. I usually pinch it when it's about four feet tall. 
and it starts blooming literally like within a couple of weeks this year i started it late i pinched i didn't pinch it so you know gardening things <laughs> things happen and here's the quick glance at the hose reel i love it you guys it is so good so i think this is pretty much it for the overview all right you guys this is it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something new and i will see you in the next one bye